Well, we're taking a look here at uh, Frankoid Wright buildings. It has an unmistakable look. Precast concrete. Let's check this out. This is uh, Florida Southern College in Lakeland. It's uh, Christmas break, so there is nobody around. This is the Danforth Chapel. And then that is beyond there, that walkway. That's a typical Frank Lloyd Wright construction. Built in 1941, as you see. They have evidently gone through some preservation recently. One of the problems, as I understand it, is that uh, these blocks were specific to the job so that uh, the molds had to be recreated. This is the Annie Pfeiffer Chapel here. Nineteen forty one. This is the largest grouping of Frank Lloyd Wright buildings anywhere in the United States. of the inside of the chapel there. Okay. Let's walk up this way. <laughs> he was kind of criticized for the uh, low height of the walkways, the covered walkways. He himself was pretty short and uh, <laughs> they felt that it was his uh, statement against uh, tall people. And we'll check out this building here. They have guided tours of this, but of course there's nobody here today. So we'll just go it alone here. I've always liked his buildings. I've been to Falling Water in Pennsylvania and the synagogue just north of the Philadelphia. Beth Shalom, I think it is. Exhibition and seminar room. But notice how that how the blocks are molded there. And this gives you the detail here of the walkway. And another view of the Annie Piper Chapel. Okay. Let's see, senior class, 1944. It's again another view of his uh, typical style, prairie style. His idea was to fit the building into the environment. That is that was his idea. And the uh, problem would be that sometimes the living spaces inside weren't exactly designed for the people. <laughs> uh, they might have felt confined. Some people felt it was difficult to live in some of the houses that he designed. He did a lot of houses in the Chicago area because he essentially was from the Midwest. Taliesin East was his home and he had Taliesin West and 
outside of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I almost got to see that, but the road was closed and couldn't see it. But I did see the Grady Gamage Auditorium in uh, just uh, at Arizona State. This gives you an idea of why we need why you need reconstruction here. Nothing lasts forever. In fact, falling water was uh, rescued. It had um, it jutted out over a uh, a creek that wrote, that went through the area, and some of the rebar was uh, deteriorating and had to be redone. So, I'm building stand for almost a hundred years. You have to keep your eye on them. Notice these walkways are very extensive. It's kind of, it's a neat idea because it keeps people from getting wet. Now that, that looks like it's new construction back there. There are, a lot, there are newer buildings here on campus, but you can see the walkways. The walkways connect them. Okay. Esplanade restoration. That's what they call this uh, covered walkway, an esplanade. And again, here you see the cast nature of the concrete. And to, to redo that, you have to re get more molding. Now, that building looks more modern, but yet the style is similar to Frank Lloyd Wright. I think some of these were completed after he left the scene by other architects. You know, he, he formed a school of architects uh, at Taliesin West in Arizona. It's kind of a on-the-job training. And uh, let's see, that's a plaza. Okay. Water dome restoration. Ah, yes. He had done a water dome and it fell into disrepair. And only recently have they brought it back. So that's the water dome. And we probably can walk right up to the to the edge of it here. Now this would have been one of the last things he did in 1948. Uh, he agreed to do this for Forest Southern because they needed students. It was uh, right after the Depression and uh, it was the one way to attract students to the campus. Okay, there's another building, Seminars Building. Okay, let's check that out again. The block construction. And you notice the copper, the aged copper, the weathered copper, there on the edges of the esplanade. And there's another view of the chapel. Okay, move on. The water makes a nice uh, sound. This building goes back to 1941. Now so let's check that out. You see what I mean about, now here I am, Right here, I'm five six. So, <laughs> yes, I'm sure some of the taller students will go through here with their uh, kind of head bowed. And we walk along here. Financial services. Yeah.
neat detail on this uh, concrete block. You see that it emits light because there's a glass block here and it's colored glass block. He was big into glass block and notice the small colored elements within the block itself. <laughs> You'll see no other like this, believe me. And it looks like the pattern varies from block to block. My guess is that uh, this one has been replaced. The coloration is different. And again, you see the deterioration of the plaster type material that forms the roof. Must be something to live and work uh, in a place that has such a history. Oh, we have gardens over here. That's nice. Let's take a walk through there. That's a new building there. There's no question about that. I know they were building a new science center. Not sure where that is. It'd be nice if I had a guide here to tell us where we were going, but you'll just have to put up with me, I guess. One of the big contributors to this uh, school has been Publix the uh, grocery store that is big in Florida and some states in the south. Started as a local store here in Lakeland. This is very nice here. I can't believe there's nobody around. Nobody. Amazing. Very peaceful.